Good morning, folks. Well, as you can tell, I'm at the house. Now, I was supposed to be heading out to meet with my group, and we were supposed to be having um, Thanksgiving dinner tonight. And Well, I come around a corner, and I heard this, kerthunk, and felt something in my steering give way, and um, it recorrected itself, so... I limped it down to my local mechanic shop and come to find out that it looks like um, a wheel bearing went out and um, they're going to check the CV joints today, but they couldn't get the wheel bearings until this morning. So we're waiting to go do that. But all the plans of mice and men, right, comes to naught. Anyway, um... I just got this package in, and what I've got here is I had to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. And, um, sorry, this is heavy. And, uh, what I got is tire chains. So it's getting into winter, and, um, I do go up in the mountains, so I wanted to get a set of tire chains, which I've put off for a number of years getting a set of chains because here on the coast I'd never needed them right but um, since we're looking at going up into the mountains every month uh, and it's coming into winter we're definitely going to need some tire chains so I, I had to go down a rabbit hole though to find these so I got these from e-trailer and they were the only company that had tire chains that I was looking for um, for sale I mean they, there were other companies that had tire chains but you know they were looking at um, six to eight weeks um, shipping t caught time this way I got them I got them within two weeks so fairly fairly fast shipping and I also got um, I don't know if you know anything about tire chains but you you want to keep them tight so I also got these uh, they're like little bungee cords but they got a, a little round spot in the middle and you put them around your tire and you it pulls the chains tight you know pulls them tight and so you want to you want to have that. Um, see, my dog is in a little bed. Remember that cot about him? There's his little bed right there. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're just kind of sitting here waiting to go take the truck back up to mechanic shop. They can't get to it until about one o'clock today. So. Uh, I can't really go anywhere with it because I, they really recommended that I leave it there, but I had no other way home. So we have to do what we got to do, right? Um, but the other thing, I don't know if you can tell, but that's, that's all my pets, right? It's kind of like a, becoming a memorial wall there. And uh, I wanted to show you because I think that if you have pets and uh, you are interested in, let me turn that overhead light off because it's kind of glaring, and you are interested in uh, keeping them, you know, a good picture of them for memories, I did these with little gemstones when we come in close you can see what i'm talking about they're little teeny little gemstones and you can order this i got them off of amazon but you can as long as you got a good picture like this is tiger tiger was 29 when she passed away this past march um and i have a whole story behind tiger as you can see i have her dates right there All right um, she was 29. This is Duke. This is my dog that I have now. And I think you've all seen Duke. 
This here is Buddy Holly. Now, Buddy Holly was my trucking dog when I was with Swift and driving over the road, and he passed away in 2011, unfortunately. And this here, this is Sergeant Doc Holliday. Yes, I said Sergeant. Um, he was a German drug dog that uh, my ex-husband's brother was an MP, and he was involved in an incident with a camper there in Germany where they were searching for drugs, and guy came out from behind the shower and shot him, which you can't see this on this picture, but along his back right there is a scar, and that is because it literally took out part of his back, and so he, he had a funny walk. Anyway, that's how we got Sergeant Doc Holliday, and he passed away in 2000. He was actually poisoned to death by a teenager in Norfolk. So, I think that if you have pets and you take good care of your pets, like mine's out there running around right now, um, I think that maybe this might be some something that you might want to do. Now, it's not only pets that you can do this with. Um, I've also done, this is my mom and dad. And um, they have since passed away also. So, and pretty much this whole wall right now is becoming a memorial wall, which is sad, but... Um, as you can see... If you're not right up on them, it looks just like them. And I think it's a pretty cool deal. And uh, I highly recommend, you know, that if you are trying to find something to occupy your time, which if you're stuck inside a lot, especially in the north, and you're stuck inside a lot, and... Um, you're not very physically able to do a lot of things this is something that i think is a pretty cool pretty cool thing to do and of course my house is a mess because it is the weekend and i was planning on going out to west virginia and into the mountains this weekend but um life goes on so, I wanted to talk to you and try and get you to realize that sometimes we make plans and sometimes those plans get knocked off the table. Now, you can react to these plans in two different ways, right? One, you can get all upset that your plans got messed up and sometimes that being upset can lead... Uh, to making even stupider choices or two you can roll with the punches okay um now in a sh in a shift situation if this was my bug out vehicle i'd be up shit creek right now because i would be on foot so this is something that you need to think about especially if you're going to be bugging out. Um, do you have a hiking bag that you can carry easily and get to wherever you're planning on going? Number two, have you checked your vehicle? Okay, this was a, an issue and... When I saw the mechanic six weeks ago, we couldn't figure out where the hum was coming from six weeks ago. So we knew that the vehicle was making noises. We just couldn't figure out what it was. So this was one of those situations where we had to go into a broke. Because visually inspecting it, 
the, there wasn't anything with the steering that was wrong. We checked the steering pump. We checked the we checked the fluids. That was all good. Uh, we checked the the CV joints six weeks ago. Those were all good. Uh, we looked all up and down the axles. That was all good. So this was one of those things where you just had to wait until it broke. Now sometimes that does happen. Um, but it puts you in a situation where you have to figure out, okay, uh, what do I do now? So let's think about this. If this had broke up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere, and it was a shift situation, right now we're going into winter, and... If you don't have a means to keep yourself warm in the vehicle while you're waiting on a tow truck, um, you're kind of screwed. And yesterday was a really bad day for me because I was in a hurry and I rushed out the door because here it was 62 degrees, which is comfortable, and I was in shirt sleeves. So by that I mean I was in my t-shirt. And I went to work, I got to work, and the temperature started dropping. Now, while I'm driving, it's fine because I'm inside the vehicle. But getting out of the vehicle was kind of cold. So, in this situation, I had no blanket on the truck. I had no heater on the truck. And I forgot my jacket. So, in this situation, if it had been any colder... Or if I had been out in the middle of nowhere and having to wait on a tow truck, I might have froze. Now, I, I bring this up because, you know, some of us are preppers. And some of us normally have all that on the vehicle. But I had took most of that off. And, and quite honestly... Some of it is sitting in my tent in West Virginia. So, this was a failure on my part. So, take it for what it's worth. Think about these things when you're out traveling, okay? Uh, going back and forth to work, you don't really, you don't really take into account that maybe the car might break on you suddenly. And now your plans have been thrown out the window. And now you have to think about, okay, how do we, how do we react to these plans? Now, luckily for me, I was able to limp the vehicle to the mechanic shop. And he was able to fix it enough to where I could limp it home and be able to limp it back today, back to the mechanic shop. But if you are like me, I know nothing about mechanics. Okay, I can change a light bulb. I can change, you know, I can take a headlight out, place a headlight. I can do something like that. But when there's an issue inside the vehicle and it's making noises or whatever, hey, I'm going to be honest. I'm a woman. I don't know. I don't know. You lucky I checked the oil in the darn thing. Okay, I'm just, I'm just being honest, right? You lucky I actually do check the oil. Okay, so this is mostly, I think, mostly being put out to the other women out there. Hey, have a couple items on your vehicle now that we're going into winter. The one thing is that my tire chains will be going in the truck and they will be staying in the truck. The second thing is, is I do have an electric blanket that I am going to be putting in the truck, which is a, a wool electric blanket, so even if... The battery goes dead on the truck. It will still keep me relatively warm. Uh, the third thing you need to look at is do you have uh, a good hiking bag? Again, I have several of those here at the house. Again, one of those will be going in the truck and staying in the truck. Um, this is a time of year 
now that we're heading uh, we're close to thanksgiving we want we we know we're all going to be traveling you know to visit family to go have those meals okay and you want to get there in one piece so i would highly recommend that you go and you take your vehicle, have your mechanic do a, a full inspection on your vehicle, check everything before you do any type of traveling, and put an item to keep you warm, some water in the, in the vehicle, and a good hiking bag, whether it be a book bag or whatever, in case you have to walk away from the vehicle and go somewhere to get help. So you want to have... You want to have that backpack with you so that you have just the basics, which is just a tarp, a blanket, and some water and food, okay, so that you can get down the road and turn around and get back, okay? So you want to have that no matter where you're going. And I think that if, if you are driving in areas that have snow and ice, you might want to think about what I just did, which is buying some tire chains, okay? Um, that's not a cheap, that's not a cheap buy. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not a cheap buy, okay? I saved for these over the summer, and I paid cash for them, but it was not a cheap buy. Now, these are the heavy-duty chains, uh, you can get something cheaper. It's called a tire sock that will work just as well, but it's like one or two, one, one or two uses, and then it's it's no good. Okay, so you need to get what's best for your vehicle. Now, when you do go to or, order chains, here's something I did not know. I figured, okay, it's a truck, right? Go look at truck chains. Okay, you got to look at your tire. And on your tire, you're going to see that along the sidewall, is going to be numbers along the sidewall. And those numbers will determine the size of the tire chain. So you want to make sure you go and you, you read the numbers on the sidewall to be like, uh, like, like uh, 55, 60, slash... 275 dash 18 16 15 you need to write those numbers down before you go and even look at uh going like to your local auto parts store and ordering tire chains okay um if you order them online uh you're going to need those numbers to order them online all right um i re highly recommend that you have them if you're in an area where you get ice and snow especially ice now here where i live at we get black ice uh, but normally that's only two to three days a year and then it's gone okay um up north they laugh at us because you know we get a dusting of snow and everything shuts down because nobody can drive in it Right? It's funny, but it's the truth, right? Nobody can, no, you get, but at the same token, we get people from up north that come down here, and we have these massive rainstorms down here, and the people from up north, they be driving like it's normal, and they hydroplane on the water. Okay, so a little bit different of a scenario, you know. The guys from up north, they freak out when they get a little bit of a windstorm. We, we down here, we used to getting 75, 80 mile an hour wind gusts. We're like, okay, yeah, it's a little bit breezy today. So, depending on where you live at in the country will depend on whether or not what you carry in your vehicle. Absolutely carry at least uh, a canteen of water with you, at, at least to get you through 12 to 18 hours because... I've seen people stuck on the interstate in the middle of a blizzard, and they're stuck there on the interstate for 12 to 18 hours. So you want enough water to last you for 12 to 18 hours, and normally a canteen will do you, you know, because you're not going to be drinking that much water in the cold. Um, you want something to keep you warm because you, you can't keep cranking your vehicle, 
especially if it's heavy, heavy snow, because the snow can come up and it can block your tailpipe, and now you've dined from carbon monoxide. Uh, so you want something in the vehicle to keep you warm. Uh, I recommend wool blankets, and wool has been around for centuries for keeping people warm. Now, unfortunately, some people are allergic to wool, so if you can't get wool, get fleece, uh, real fleece. Spend that few extra dollars to get the good stuff because this could mean your life, and you could be out there and you could be dying because you bought the cheapo, you know. Go look at the product. Go look at the quality of the product before you buy, right? Uh, I mean, I'm just, I don't want you to waste your money, but at the same token, you need a good quality blanket, a good quality tent, and a good quality backpack and canteen. You need those things. In your vehicle at all times. I'm telling you this because yesterday I was stuck on the side of the highway. And I was like, okay, you a total dumbass, okay? You a total dumbass today. And it scared the living shit out of me. Not going to lie. I'm sure that when I talked to Prepper Nurse One yesterday, that he probably thought I was having a meltdown. Because I was literally almost in tears. Because I had, I am a prepper. And this goes through your mind. I'm a prepper and I'm stuck on the side of the highway. I don't have a coat because I stupidly didn't have it in the vehicle. I don't have a blanket because oh, I left it in West Virginia. I don't have a heater because oh, it's in West Virginia. My backpack is sitting here at the house because I took it out of the truck to change things that were in it for hunting because it's hunting season here. And so I went to change things that were in the backpack and left the backpack in, in the house. And then I was in a hurry yesterday morning and rushed out of the door. And look, I got coats hanging like you wouldn't believe and didn't, and didn't grab one. Do you see how easy this could have been? A very serious situation. So I'm telling you this because I want you to be safe. And this, I, I'm, I freely admit my mistakes when I make them. I freely admit them. Um, I knew the part was going bad, but we didn't know which part it was. We didn't know if it was the steering rods or the CV joints, or the wheel bearings, well, now we know. So we knew this six weeks ago, but, you know, the mechanic told me six weeks ago, it'll probably be two, three months before anything goes bad on it. Just continue to drive it. And then uh, when, when you hear it start clunking or making a really bad noise, that's when we know we, now, we can, uh, now we can address the issue because now we can see where the problem is. So it's not that I have a bad mechanic, it's that I drive more miles than most people do in a weekly basis. So what would have been for a normal person three months for me is six weeks. See? Um, just address those issues. And like I said, uh, get tire chains if you're in the snow and ice. Um, I do carry cat litter with me. Uh, cat litter is really good. If you get stuck in snow, you can pour some cat litter down in front of your tire and it gives you a little bit of grip. If you don't want to spend the money for the, those traction things that you stick down in the snow and then you run up on. I, I don't even know what they're called, but they're like boards. They look like kind of like surfboards with holes in it. Okay. Um. If you don't want to spend your money for that, you know, uh, I do carry cat litter. I carry cat litter everywhere I go because you never know when you're going to need it for absorbing an oil spill or getting you out of a out of a sticky situation, right? Um, that wouldn't have done me no good here. 
So, best laid plans of mice and men, right? Okay, well, I got to go and I got to get dressed because I got to limp the vehicle back up to the mechanic shop and drop it off. And um, I wanted to share this with you that, you know, we get to thinking about things and we think we got this, that, or the other. And then a uh, situation happens and all your plans go to naught. And I don't want to see anybody stuck on the side of the highway, freezing to death because they did not think to have simple things on the vehicle at all times. So this was a failure on my part, but at the same token, uh, it shows how complacent we can become in our day-to-day -day life because we're in such a hurry to do this, that, and the other. We can get complacent, and complacency can kill. And uh, I, I want you to take this as a wake-up call uh, from my mistake. And with that, I'm going to go. And y'all have a blessed weekend. And I hope everyone up there uh, in West Virginia has an awesome Thanksgiving dinner tonight. Sorry I can't be there. But, uh, you know, I got to get the vehicle fixed. So it's going to cost me about $800 to get the vehicle fixed right now. Um, hopefully it's not the CV joint too because that would be another $1,200. So just be praying it's not the CV joint too. Okay. All right. With that, I'm going to let y'all go. Bicycle.